So allow me to demonstrate some of the changes we hear in the construction of early violins and bows to today's violins and bows. So here we see a modern violin. This was made in Los Angeles in 2006. So she truly is a baby in the world of violins. But you can see clearly the shape and construction of the modern violin as opposed to its earlier ancestors. Previously, the belly would be a lot fatter, so there would be more resonance going on. But more resonance means there's more dissipation of sound, so it's not going to project as well. Uh, you can see the, sh the angle of the neck here is angled back. Previously, they were completely straight, which again creates more tension as the strings are pulled tighter ever so slightly. And that tension means more power, more brightness. Remember that when the violin first came out, in competition with the earlier viol family, uh, a lot of Europe preferred the mellower sound of the viol versus the shrillness, the brightness of the violin. But in the world of opera, it was a perfect fit. You probably are familiar with seeing the modern bow. Modern meaning this bow has actually been around since the uh, mid to late 1700s. It, it arrived around 1760 and became popular about 1780 and has remained essentially unchanged. The only difference being we see, we see a lot more of these uh, high quality bows being made of carbon fiber instead of wood. But the shape and the purpose of it is exactly the same. Now let's compare it to a replica of a Baroque bow. So this would be the type of bow that Bach or Handel or Vivaldi would have known. This is a Baroque bow. Let's see if we can compare. It's a little difficult to see perhaps in this video, but hopefully you can see the shape of the stick is essentially backwards. The earlier bow is based on the shape of a hunting bow. So it curves outward away from the hair. The modern bow curves inward toward the hair. And that's very important for the type of sound that these bows produce. This bow is much lighter, so it works really well with folk music and fiddle. Um, it's very agile, very bouncy. This one is a lot heavier, but it means you get consistent response up across all parts of the bow. So it's predictable, it's heavy, it produces a broader, bigger sound. Let's hear a difference. If I were really doing this right, I'd have an earlier violin strung with gut strings. But at least this will give you an example. I do have synthetic strings on now, and as we've looked at, this is a modern made violin. But, but even changing the bow gives us an earlier sound. So listen to how the bow speaks. That's a natural result of the swell here and the dissipating of the sound here. And it was in fashion in the 1500s, 1600s. It was called the bloom or the blossom of the sound. And it was part of the character. So you might have a sacred work that sounds something like this. yeah? But what if I play that same bit with a modern bow? Notice I have to hold it differently because the weight distribution is completely different. So if I pull this straight across the string, you're going to hear a consistent sound from frog to tip. I don't have to change anything. The bow just is louder, is steadier, is more consistent, right? So if I play that same little uh, Baroque Renaissance melody.
Can you hear the difference? It's quite dramatic. So these two bows are perfect examples of the evolution of sound moving from mellower and resonant and sweet and blossomy to the more modern style pushed by opera, which is loud and consistent and reliable and predictable and some kind of sound that can carry.